So here are the paints that I have decided to use. I usually only pick like three or four colors, but I got a little carried away. I don't even know if I'll use all these colors. So I really love Mission Paint, um, but I have a collection of a whole bunch of different things. Uh, Schmincke is also one of my favorites. So, but I have a couple others here, some Winsor Newton and uh, some just kind of random ones that I just picked for the color. But um, so I've got uh, sepia here and uh, neutral, neutral gray and black. And I doubt I will use both of those ivory black, but because of the black stripes, I thought maybe I would want some real intense black. Um, I'm definitely not um, of the, uh, the frame of mind that you have to make your own black that comes from the olden days when they didn't have any. So, um, but you know, to each his own, but I don't make my own black. Put those over there, I've already put them in a palette, um, which I love these palettes because then if, when it dries out, if I don't finish the painting, I can come back and they're all there. The colors are not very accurate uh, on this. So I also have it on my monitor, uh, which is facing me and you can't see it, but the colors are much more rich and vibrant on my computer monitor. So but I wanted you to have a reference there. All right, I'm gonna start with a couple of really big brushes here. Um, so this is a 18 flat and I've got a um, 25 flat and then one of my, I love this just really um, big, brush here and I'm just going to give a little bit of water. I'm going to start in the center. So right now I'm just going to pull more yellow into a different um, well and just water it down. If I draw, if I, as I'm going across my, to my water, if drips get on my um, tiger, I'm really not going to worry about it. And I'm just going to start putting some neutrals down where I see the lighter areas here. So there's light here. I'm gonna avoid where the white is. Um, so I see some light areas here. Remember I did wet down the, <clears throat> the paper, but I might wanna go back and do that again in a few minutes. So I'm just going in here. Um, and uh, I have a paper towel up here that I will blot now again. You have to kind of let this dry. I remember that under here is there some dark. So I'll we'll do that. And then later we'll come back. But the wetter that this is right now, the easier it will be to um, put some dark in there later. Definitely don't want any wet on the chin. And the reason is because that chin's going to stay white. A um, little wet right here because that area is going to get dark. So while this is um, sitting, I'm going to go get just a little darker of a color. And I still have a pretty big brush right now, um, but I'm just going to throw in some uh, a little darker color. Again, I'm, I'm following the colors in the picture. Okay, so I'm looking right here. It's a little darker. And right here on the nose, which is right here. You can see, cause I had a, I have a, a, an ink line right there. Um, right here, there is a, now that's gonna merge together with the, with the super wetness of the paper right now. So it's really pretty much gonna go away but I'm just gonna build that color up. Uh, let's go right here. Now where the paper's drier, the color is sitting uh, and not 
moving as much, which works in some areas. And a select right there, I like that that's not moving as much as it's moving on the nose. What I have here is just yellow that I mixed with a little bit of blue and that creates basically just a neutral. So I'm working right here, uh, right around the eye and I'm going to just put that neutral right down there. I want this part of the ear to be defined. So I'm, I'm, I, I'm using the, the brush that I have actually taken all the color and dried. And now that's given me that definition there um, that I'm gonna go now go back and add color to, to make it even more defined. I don't want to overdo it with the orange because there's so much white on this tiger. So I'm going a little back with a little bit of bright orange just because I'm looking on the picture and I really like just that uh, coming down right there. Um, Brighten that up and uh, just going to tap it in because eventually that's going to darken there. So I'm going to just tap it in down there a little bit. And a little bit up here in the ears. little bit around the eyes. Again, that real... I'm going to go in and add a little more water here. I'm just tapping the dark in the shadow areas and letting that dark paint flow down into the water. in some of my darker color. You have to have some pretty, pretty uh, good watercolor paper for this because the, wa the paper becomes pretty saturated. And uh, so if you don't have some really, um, some watercolor paper that can take that saturation, you know, really want something thick and uh, that can hold that without getting buckled. Too buckled anyway. A little buckled is okay. You can always iron that out. One thing that happens in a painting like this is that as the as the paint dries and you add more water, you start to see the layers build up. It looks a lot more complicated than it is. You, you're not really, you're not going for realism here. You're really um, going for an effect. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm still up here putting in my darks. Uh, I'm putting in my uh, stripes. Got a stripe there, stripe up here. Now they're not necessarily the same stripes that I had when I was doing the ink. Um, so it's kind of a combination. When I use watercolor this way, I find myself going back and looking at the reference photo, finding a color and you know putting it in the picture. I just go back and forth and tap in new colors. It's, it's about looking at the picture and really seeing where you see more colors. And the more you look at the picture, the more colors you see and the more places you see that you want to add. There always comes a moment in a painting where I feel that I just need to add some ab abstract element. And it often is just a splash of color in the background, or sometimes I will splash droplets or something. In this case, I really felt like blue was a good color because it's the opposite of orange, and so it contrasts really nicely. There is no, um, you know, nice way to put it on the painting. I just slopped it on. I feel like it needs just a really, really bright yellow somewhere on here. Oh yeah, that's great. I'm gonna take a rigger here and I am going to see if I can do something fun with these eyes. Okay. So I don't know the name of this blue, but any bright blue would work. It's probably a sky blue. I don't even have the name of the paint. It was just in my kit. And sometimes uh, you just have to pull out what you have. So I'm adding detail now using the rigor and a dark gray mixed with a little bit of the brown or the ochre. I am um, just looking at my reference and finding out where the black is and adding it in. There's a lot of detail in this tiger face and I'm actually using both the black and white reference photo that I had for the original drawing and this color photo. And I'm going back and forth between them and so the stripes are not matching up with either photo. They're, it's kind of my own invention, which is fun. So it makes the painting my own. Um, it's not an exact duplicate of the photo. And I'm, you know, I'm just looking at what the tiger's face would have on it and, and throwing stripes and dots in those locations. Now here, I'm kind of using the edge of the 
brush and kind of like a pen where I'm pushing down at the beginning of the stroke and then pulling up to make it a, a brush type of stroke and um, using the water, but the, it, it's pretty dry right now. I decided to use the dark on the original for the inside of the ear rather than the white of the color tiger. And then once I painted it, I was not happy with that black scribble on the inside of the ear. So I went back with water and I softened it. Uh, these, the beauty of watercolor is that you really can um, fix your mistakes with water. A lot of people say that you can't fix mistakes uh, like you can with oil or acrylic because with those mediums, you can go on top of it once it dries. And with watercolor, you know, because it is so has transparent medium, you can't go on top of it as easily. But what you can do is use water. And um, yes, eventually it will turn muddy. Like you can see that right ear is honestly a big mess but in the end I still love my painting so you can just play with the water and it will eventually work out most of the time. I'm gonna soften that up just by adding some water there. Okay and then I'm just gonna go in and just tap in a little bit of color for the nose. Basically just mixed a little bit of red with white and orange to get, didn't want to get too far out of what I was already using. I just wanted to okay. I already had a little bit of shadow because of the orange that was already on there, so that was good. And there's the finished painting. I hope you liked. Uh, this tutorial, please subscribe and like and come back.